value-added agriculture generally focuses uh, on production on manufacturing processes, marketing of services that increase the value of primary agricultural commodities. Perhaps by increasing appeal to the consumer and the consumer's willingness to pay a premium over similar but undifferentiated products. In 2018, agriculture value added per worker for Zimbabwe was 415 United States dollars. Before agriculture value added per worker of Zimbabwe started to increase to reach a level of 415 in 2018, it went through a trial reaching a low of 233 United States dollars in 2008. We're joined by uh, the immediate former chairperson of Agricultural Rural Development Authority, ADA, uh, a, a state-owned enterprise under the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Rural Resettlement that is responsible for spearheading the advancement of agricultural production and rural development. Um, but other than that, uh, he's a businessman of not and agriculture expert, um, the chairperson of Traditional Grains Producers Association, TGPA, as well as uh, the Chief Executive Officer of Reapers Private Limited, uh, Mr. Bez Unyabadza. He's on Technomec to discuss with us the importance of value addition of our agriculture. Uh, good day, Mr. Nyabadza, and welcome to Technomec. Yes, good afternoon. How are you? <clears throat> Fine, thanks. Thank you. Um, value addition in agriculture is needed for the profitability of the farmers, to empower the farmers and weaker sections of the society to provide safe, quality, and branded food to the consumers, to reduce post-harvest losses, reduction in import, and increasing exports, encourage the growth of subsidiary industries. And um, you are perhaps the longest-serving chairperson of ADA for 12 years. Um, and right now, you are now the, um, the CEO of Reapers and also the chairperson of Traditional Grains Producers Association. Um, I wanted to ask, what you are doing as uh, reapers at the Traditional Grains Production Association to encourage uh, value addition in agriculture um, in Zimbabwe? Well, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, we must start off with uh, the key issue here. When we talk of development, especially in agriculture, there are five stages which are critical, which are intertwined as well. That's your research, your production, your processing, your marketing, and consumption. In other words, the byproducts which come from each and every product. So they need investment. And as an economy, there are challenges in some of the segments of that uh, roadmap. But I think, first and foremost, we tend to rush to production, forgetting that uh, the critical exercise is about research. Production is a secondary exercise after research. Research indicates to us how do we do it, when do we do it, how competitive we are, and we must always factor in yesterday, today, and tomorrow, because the research is ongoing and uh, it must be funded. And this is why I think, not just as an economy, but as Africa in general, we are weak on research. We don't regard research as a very key. We, yes, we, we highlight it, but we don't put our money where our mouth is when it comes to research. Agriculture contributes 17% uh, to Zimbabwe's uh, GDP and provides employment um, and income for 60 to 70% of the population. Uh, also supplying 60% of the raw materials that are required by the industry in the country. Um, what are you doing to ensure that we are well able to, to match this 17% of the GDP and even be able to go beyond? We are now advocating that uh, we step up our research. Research will guide us to manage tomorrow. Uh, funding of research is critical in agriculture because technology, as you know, is essential, is critical. Today we are under threat of uh, climate change and other issues which are happening throughout globally. And as such, we need more than ever to fund our research. Now, when it comes to Zimbabwe, we are by far an agricultural economy. And we inherited a system way back 
which maintain the general trend. In other words, when I say that, when you look at our history, going back to the Federation, we had degrees like one doing what we call a degree in animal science, <clears throat> a degree in crop science. Those are general degrees. We have more than three, four dozen crops which grow well in Zimbabwe. How do you think a young man or a young woman can grasp all the aspects of uh, uh, crop science? So we are saying we must transform agently to specialization. Specialization will then focus on those key pillars of development, research, production, processing, marketing, and consumption. More so, we then say, for example, let's take a subject like sugarcane. We grow sugarcane in this country. We export sugarcane. And when you look at the geography of sugarcane, it's the lower belt. In particular, you look at uh, uh, Chiret's district in Mashingo province. That whole district is, 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 is driven by one commodity, which is sugarcane. Now, do you have a graduate in sugarcane? No, we don't have a graduate in sugarcane. And why not? I don't think I'll get a good answer on that. We always export raw sugar. There are numerous byproducts which will enable us to add value. In other words, what I'm saying is sugarcane is not just food, it's actually an industry. And when we value it following those five aspects, we will have people employed under research, under production, under processing techniques, under marketing techniques, and indeed the byproducts which come out of that. So if we do that with bananas, with mangoes, with maize, with uh, groundnuts, with uh, serving, these are industries which should be pursued just as we decentralized our education system, we now have 10 provincial universities, plus more. Some of the, the provinces have got two or three universities. But the bottom line is that even our hospitals, it's like that. So we need to specialize. Specialization will lead to value addition within the territory. Sugarcane is grown in Chiretzi. It's processed in Chiretzi. It's marketed from Chiretzi. The same thing across the river, across Sawe River. You go across Chisumbanjo ethanol plant. We grow the sugar cane there. We process the fuel there, the ethanol, and we market it from there. Even Zimra is actually housed on the farm. Now, that's what we can do with <coughs> two, three dozen crops in Zimbabwe if we follow the value chain. In a recent exclusive interview with Technomic Magazine, uh, the Minister of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Road Resettlement, Dr. Anxious Jungwe Masuka, revealed to this publication the importance of beneficiation of Zimbabwean agricultural produce. Just like you are saying it, I'm, I'm, I'm very amazed because you are talking about uh, the, the, the issue of beneficiating even sugar cane. Yes. And you were talking about somebody graduating in something specific. Uh, like if it's banana, it's banana, yes. so that they are well able to be advanced in bananas. Yes. Um, let me quote what the Honorable Minister said. He said, we must ensure that there is value addition and beneficiation of whatever we produce so that we don't export cotton as lint. We don't export semi-processed tobacco alone, yes. but we can value add because each time we do not value add, we're exporting jobs and we're exporting value. Yes. Uh, complementing what you were saying, I, I, I wanted to um, <clears throat> have your take on what one of the minister, Dr. Masuka, said in relation to our own products here, be it sugar can, mm -hmm. where we are able to even make ethanol out of it and be able to uh, make fuel yes. out of it, yes. your take. Thank you very much. Now, the honorable minister is correct, and we must assist him. We are the foot soldiers. <coughs> Let's take uh, cotton as a fine example. Yes, lint is a byproduct of cotton. And by far, 55 to 60% of our cotton is grown in the Midlands province, precisely Gokwe district, South Gokwe, North Gokwe, Nambuzia area. That's the main hub of our, of our cotton. And we are saying, to complement it, we are challenging Midlands State University because of their geography 
to be experts, to have a degree course founded on cotton. Mm -hmm. A young man, a young woman has majored in cotton. Then that degree must have minimum positions of research, production techniques, processing techniques, marketing techniques, and the byproducts which come out of cotton. Now, if we have such specialization, then it means we are now looking for global markets for importation of technology to complement our raw material base. Today we are importing, we are exporting our cotton lint to Liverpool or other <coughs> European destinations. Mm. We should be following up and saying, who is buying our cotton? For what purpose? And in, engage those people, those companies, those entities abroad and say, look, you invest in our raw material. We also want to take up equity in your processing company or your byproducts, the finished products. Thereby, earning foreign currency in a JV, joint venture approach, where we are the source of raw materials, but nevertheless, we are also participating in the usage, final usage of that raw material. In other words, Zimbabwe should be now saying, we are a source of raw material. It's not enough. But we have leverage to engage those who are buying our raw materials like Tobago and say, look, we want to also be equity holders in your cigarette manufacturing company in China, in London, in Washington, or in, 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 in Paris. If we do that, we are mitigating and transfer of skills takes place. Those are the challenges, I believe. Capital is important. And the innovation, the maintenance of that capital, technology, we are always found with aged machinery. But if we have such a link where we are participating in the final production of goods, raw material sourced from us, but they are active in London as, as raw material for their own industry, and we are equity holders in those companies. And with, it, with a global approach today, it's possible. Capital is global today. Let's hit that thing. But the handicap is in our education system, which we inherited, which taught us that Africa, you are a source of raw materials, full stop. And we are now questioning and saying, look, hang on here, let's, re let's, re let's revisit that inherited position, that federation teaching. You must go back. Our university was known as University of Rhodesia and Nyasaland. There was a reason for that. Mm -hmm. One university serving three countries, serving three economies, Zambia, Malawi, and Zimbabwe. The engineer who came out of that was a universal. You would apply it everywhere. Mm -hmm. So is the lawyer, so is the teacher, so is the medical a doctor. But we are saying, uh -uh. a doctor, for example, we have eye specialists, ear specialists, others who do uh, specializing on children, mm -hmm. others on women. Mm -hmm. So we need <coughs> that specialization, and that's what is lacking. And we are challenging our academia to say, look, let's create new degrees which are relevant to our situation and abandon the inherited position because there are consequences in some cases. In other words, this is why, if you want to push it further, the, to this day, bread which was baked in Marondera is consumed in Lvev, 1,200 kilometers away, on a daily basis. We think that's normal. That's abnormal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, uh, I want to bring it closer to home. Um, I was looking and studying one ornament um, in right here in this office, showing the tree of life that emanates from groundnuts alone. You know, and I want you to walk us through the value beneficiation of groundnuts. Uh, in vernacular, in the Shona language, so Amazamba in Ndevele, in Ndevele. Um, you know, I was amazed that um, a, a, a groundnuts, we, we actually have groundnuts right behind you. Uh, there is a whole lot of stuff that comes out of groundnuts. But it appears in Zimbabwe we are only beneficiating dovi uh, or peanut butter. Yes, yes. Yet there is a lot of value that we can get out of the groundnuts. Absolutely. Uh, who, who knew that groundnuts can be a substitute for diesel fuel? You know, for, 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 for a lot of things and, and all that. So I, I, I want to talk about the beneficiation of groundnuts. Um, what is needed, really, uh, for, 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 for us to take advantage of the equity from groundnuts 
and also for us to be able to make something out of them. Thank you very much. You know, my own company, Rippers, is uh, very involved in the groundnuts, uh, both from a production point of view and processing. But there's much, much more to that. In fact, groundnuts is an industry. That's really the word. It's an industry. Now, when I say that, there is groundnut flour, there is groundnut grit, you mentioned diesel. Mm -hmm. There are other numerous byproducts. But if you ask the market, we tend to believe that it's peanut butter and, of course, a snack, you know, mm. you know. But roasted peanuts, that's not... And guess what? The entire European continent does not grow groundnuts. Mm -hmm. But they are the biggest consumers in the world. So Africa must take that opportunity. Nature given that look. We must grow groundnuts as much as possible. Not just for export, but for processing. Mm -hmm. Invite those companies in Europe who process groundnuts, who take groundnuts as raw materials, mm -hmm. to invest here in Africa, in Zimbabwe, in Sadak, and us in return, take up equity in those companies for the finished products. Because of the weather alone, our weather is suitable for groundnuts. Mm -hmm. And we should be. Let me give you a fine example how America is taken. There is a the famous, the former president of the United States, Jimmy Carter. Mm -hmm. He was a famous groundnut, groundnut producer, mm -hmm. Georgia and other areas like that. And he went on further to build machinery founded on ground. In other words, today you buy machinery known as the Carter Model 1, Carter Model 2. Mm -hmm. After him, because not only was he growing groundnuts, but he went further to design machinery for planting, for processing, for harvesting, for processing post management after 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 harvest. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole industry. One crop, one crop only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why that's how rich we are in Africa. <coughs> but we have been blinded by inherited education, which taught us a general path. And we are pleased that uh, the honourable minister Komori Moruira is talking about uh, education 5.0. He needs maximum support from all of us. In fact, the danger is that those who are supposed to be teaching are the old school themselves. They were taught, they are graduates of uh, University of Rhodesia in mm -hmm. Now they are deans of faculties. They are heads of departments. They are, <coughs> excuse me, they are now uh, vice chancellors. We are not saying they should not uh, Revive, get a reorientation. No. Mm -hmm. But they must fuse and take responsibility. Say, look, the path we went through perhaps is not the best and it's not the only one. And they must be prepared to undergo change, to undergo technology revision so that they teach today's graduates what is relevant for tomorrow. Education is always about yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I'm saying, in groundnuts, there's so much more we are not even doing now. But the key issue is, do we support groundnuts as much as we should? I don't think so. The research is weak. Mm -hmm. And even under Pumbuza, the amount of allocation which is extended to groundnuts is very little. Mm -hmm. We are financing maize because it's a chief crop. But we should drive these other, these other crops in a manner where you grow groundnuts in 62 rural districts in this country. Mm -hmm. You don't do that with maize. You don't do that with tea or tobacco. So let's single out some crops. Let's have what I call uh, crop leadership at district level, where we say, Cholocho, what are the five crops you grow well? Bikita, what are the five crops? To be precise, let's not even use the technology of provincial. Let's go district. Mm -hmm. If we take district and say Mutoko, what are the five crops you would want to grow, which you grow well? That crop leadership, anchored on the district, will grow GDP and speak to this value addition because then you will find that 49 out of the 62 rural districts, they might cite groundnuts as a crop which they want. And if we invest, starting with research, production, processing techniques, marketing techniques, and the byproducts which come from groundnuts, you are very right, there is about 39 
products which come from ground, mm. but we only talk of peanut butter here mm. and uh, and roasted peanuts. Mm. There's mm. 39, there's 37 more which we'll be talking about, yes. but we are not exposed to that. Mm -hmm. We need volume for the act to attract machinery and the mm. capital to come into our territory in Zimbabwe. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, 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 still on groundnuts. Um, let me just fast forward a bit. Uh, you know, we, we actually have uh, edible oil and non-edible oil that we can make from groundnuts, uh, which includes margarine. But we, we, we see ourselves importing margarine from South Africa. Uh, I guess there's nothing wrong with that, maybe, but there's something wrong if we can make our own margarine from our own groundnuts. Yes. But we are busy importing millions of dollars of with of, of such products and um, what are you doing as um, as reapers as traditional um, grains products products association what are you doing to ensure that we're able to maximize and be able to make our own margarine and be able to sell our own margarine locally and also be able to export the margarine instead of continuing on importing margarine when we can actually be making margarine from our own groundnuts Yes, that's a good question. There is a saying which says, knowledge is power. And that is the case here. There is a lot of things we don't know. And we believe that going to university is to get knowledge. I don't believe that. That's part of the knowledge you get. Technical knowledge. But knowledge is all over. And sometimes, the curriculum which was exposed to ourselves, those are the pitfalls. When you look back, we have a mindset of, we were even on a mindset where we believed that dating, getting your hands dirty was not the right thing. You must be smart, you must wear a suit, even in what weather, it's sad, but that's the truth. Even in what weather, you must wear a suit and you must uh, <coughs> never get dirty, you must never put in overall. That was more or less the teaching yesterday, but that's not the case at all. Now, if you are not exposed to specialization, to know what comes out of grounds, then of course you remain with the peanut butter and the roasted nuts. Mm -hmm. And you, you believe that that's all. No, there's much more to that. Zimbabwe has got 65 to 70 crops which do well in our nation. Mm -hmm. If it's under cereals, under plantations, under traditional grains, under oil seeds, under fruit, we have a variety of crops, horticulture crops, which do well. For example, garlic, ginger, mm -hmm. and turmeric. Mm -hmm. Traditional Grains Producers Association, as the name implies, yesterday we abandoned our food. And we went on to believe that uh, uh, imported food was the best. And indeed, you look at how we, maize is not exactly a traditional grain in our, in our economy, it's not. Mm -hmm. We had rapoko, we had sorghum, we had millet, which were the founding positions of our grains in this, in this country, which are still holding firm, but you look at the seed industry, the way it was structured. Mm -hmm. They were trained and funded to produce maize seed, mm -hmm. soybean seed, and wheat. You would hardly, you would better to get a, a rapogo seed, groundnut seed, sugar bean seed. Mean it. It's only now, and we must pay credit to uh, the Second uh, Republic, where they have now said, under Fumbuza, there is a strong budget for production of traditional grains. But we continue to lobby the government and say, look, let's spread, let's visit this crop leadership at district level, mm -hmm. that will reveal data in the prioritization. Because we've got product, we've got provinces in this country who do tobacco, who do maize, who do wheat. And the Cholocho does not do any of that. So, but how, how are we leaving Cholocho out? Cholocho has got some, some products she wants, some funding she wants, but we are leaving her out. The same thing would be said by Gwanda, if it's not animals, the cropping side. There are many issues which we we'll bring on board. So, new organizations coming through, like traditional grains producers association, mm -hmm. is to remind government, to highlight to government, because government is a key partner in development, to say, look, let's spread our risk. 
the stock feed industry must be founded on traditional grains. Let's leave maize for human consumption, if at all. Let's step up production of rapogo for human consumption. Millet, soga. So we are seeing that takeoff, and I must say, the current team in agriculture, both the minister and the secretary, really they are working hard. They are listening people, and we, we interact with them, and really there is a buy-in. Indeed, the highest office is facilitating through cabinet that look, traditional grains are now, have got a place in Zimbabwe, in our economy, and let's reflect, let's not just carry on as what we did yesterday. Uh, awesome. Let's talk about um, one of the non-edible oils that can be produced from groundnuts, uh, greases and lubricants. Uh, in 2020, uh, last year, the market was $125 billion for greases and lubricants. And this year, 2021, it is expected to grow to $130 billion. The forecast uh, for 2028 is expected to actually multiply to 167.48 billion, which is a growth of 3.7%. Uh, I think that is an industry that shows the potential of how much money can come in Zimbabwe just by crushing groundnuts yes. and making greases and lubricants. $167 billion industry. Well, this is why I said that uh, our education system did not expose us that far. And this is a challenge to all of us. But it's, it's, it's better to know that, guys, we've got a problem. And once you've got a problem today, let's then, yeah, then let's deploy tomorrow to find solutions to that problem. It's not just grammars. You could name another two, three dozen crops with a similar capacity. But we have not been exposed yesterday to find out what comes out of this value addition. Mm. I said earlier on, Research is critical. Research is fundamental. If you remember some years back, under the AIDS pandemic, we all paid a level. All of us were subjected to a tax level that you must pay an AIDS level. For two years or so, we need to do that at this level. We must pay a research level. All of us, taxable. We must be taxed. Because that is building tomorrow by investing in research today. Mm -hmm. We need research in health, we need research in food, we need research in transport, in education, in various facets of our economy. Some of our better brains within the academia, they are very frustrated because they don't have money to research. If you want to build tomorrow, it's founded on yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, research is, must be funded on a compulsory basis for the good of tomorrow. So, all what you're talking about, greases, who would have thought about it? If you ask the ordinary uh, Zimbabwean about greases coming out of grammar, I don't think they they, they, they yeah, take you seriously. Yeah, yes. But that's, that's the magnitude. Mm. And guess what? There are companies in Europe, in South America, in North America rather, who specialize in the importation of, and production of grammar, Nicaragua is funded mostly by American money to grow grammars, contracting a whole country to grow grammars. Mm -hmm. Because then, what happens then after that? They sell them the machinery, they sell them the technology, they sell them. And mm -hmm. this is how it should be like. Look, better late than never. Mm -hmm. Africa has been deemed, has declared a source of raw materials. Whether it's cocoa from Ghana, whether it's um, uh, tea from Zimbabwe or Malawi or Kenya, mm. we are a perennial source of raw materials. We, in fact, what we need, my brother, is a degree in raw materials management for Africa. Yes. Every university in Africa to have a raw materials management mm -hmm. degree course. Mm. Then you put through your students to find out why are we exporting tea? Why are we exporting coffee? What is it? If it's lack of technology, let's import technology. Business is now founded on a principle of PPP, public, private. This is what we must do. Now, we in Zimbabwe are challenged at this hour mm -hmm. because we did something which has never been done in Africa. 
to prioritize getting our land back. That is commendable. And forever we are indebted to the First Republic under the leadership of uh, Comrade Mugabe and his team. We are forever indebted to that. That's the source of value in the land. And because of that, we, are, we must now say, how do we deploy this land? How do we use it to the best advantage? Mm -hmm. And right now, this is where we are. Mm -hmm. There is now such a question. This debate mm -hmm. is testimony of that. Mm -hmm. You were hunting, you were a hunter, you came here sniffing around, and today we are talking about this. Mm -hmm. Others are listening. One or two will be excited. One or two in the academia world will be excited. Mm -hmm. And that's how we reconstruct <coughs> our way forward. Guided by yesterday's deeds, today's deeds, to build up tomorrow. And we are saying that specialization thrust in education, mm -hmm. itemizing what is coming from Zarabani, what is coming from Bekita, what is coming from Zaka, what is coming from Cholocho, what's coming from Nyanga, what's coming from Utoko. If those questions are now circulating among us in mm -hmm. and we prioritize and say, well, we welcome the government on the devolution issue. Now we are finding that the roads are being built all over the place. They are privatizing. Some are building schools, some hospitals, some buying more equipment. That's what we need. That's what we need. So we must now maintain the trust and the remain people who are prepared to learn. But let's pay our way. And the research is the starting point. Uh, another interesting thing is we can actually make insecticides from groundnuts. And the insecticides industry is about 45 billion United States dollars. And not only that, we can also make um, global um, soaps, you know, and uh, the global soaps industry in 2019 was worth 100 billion dollars and is projected to grow by 7.5 percent so that by 2023 it will actually go beyond 133 billion dollars. Um, who could have even thought again that groundnuts can actually make soap, can actually make insecticides. And um, as traditional grains producers association, um, are you going to make a move for us to be able to actually value add, beneficiate these groundnuts to even make insecticides and get into the $45 billion industry, to even make the global soaps and get into the $133 billion industry. We are running a marathon, that's what I say. And we have started. The fact that we are talking about this in some detail, that's part of the marathon. But there's much more to be done. We need to impart these skills to our children in learning institutions. And we want, for example, if we had a graduate in groundnuts, he would be averse with all these issues. Mm -hmm. But when you have a graduate in crop science, oh, please, crop science is about three dozen crops. How can he then? He's not a master of none. He's a master of none. He's a jack of all trades. We want specialization. And I'm pleased that uh, the Honorable Minister Murugura is a listening minister. He's always wanting to push an agenda to say, let's be practical. And then we are saying, if we prioritize crop leadership, then we say, you universities, you are in this geography of, uh, let's say, they are in Mutoko. Mutoko is Mashunal and East, uh, uh, and, uh, and East province. There's a university there. That's where we say, you make a start. Design a degree course which is suits our environment, which is suits our output. I was in Brazil before we started the Sumba. And we went to one particular state in Brazil. It's nothing but ground, I mean, uh, uh, sugarcane. They went on to design machines, planting machines, harvesters, everything in that province from one crop. That's what we must do. That's the specialization I'm talking about. It's not just about marketing. It's about designing the equipment. Engineers coming in. Working on groundnuts, working on sugarcane, working on bananas, working on oranges. That's the specialization which we demand because our country was loved by the highest almighty. We have a wonderful weather, 12 months of the year, 
We can be growing goods. And we must also graduate from growing maize every year. Let's have one hit. We do 6 million tons. The next year, those fields are deployed to grow dedicated export crops. That, to me, is what I believe is the way forward. Yes. Uh, I want to come back to the dedicated export crops. Whilst I'm, I'm just concluding on the interesting aspect of the fact that uh, our viewers may not have even known that we could use groundnuts as a possible replacement for diesel fuel. And that is a $250 billion market. Not only that, glycerol, uh, chemicals, including explosives, all coming from groundnuts. I want you to talk about the issue of nostril accounts and relationship yes. with uh, uh, Maichi Muti. Yes. How do they factor in with this beneficial we're talking about? Now, you bring a very pertinent, important subject. The graduation of Maichi Muti is the future in our country. And this relates to the financial system in our country. Very much founded on the European banking system. The master, what the master did, what he left 40 years ago. What have you got if you want to borrow? I will say this. Our bankers are trained, in my view, to look after a polished diamond, if I can call it that. They are not trained to look after an unpolished diamond. An unpolished diamond is my chimote in the village. Who has got multiple needs? Who has got the ethic of working hard? Who is producing value year in, year out? But what do we do? We say to her, Ah, my chimote, you know, you must come to the city. And when you come to the city, we must take you through a credit, a set of questions which she has never heard of. Instead of us going to her and assisting her and taking risks, let me be the We grow maize in Karoi, 200 kilometers from Arari. We cut that mill to Arari. We mill it in Arari and guess what? We take that mill and bring it back to Kariba, past Karoi, 300 kilometers. And then we charge the guys. And the transport guys are smiling all the way to the bank. And in the case, causing untold harm to the uh, balance of payments because we import diesel as an economy. Why are we doing that? This is where business intelligence, if it was taught in our universities, will unravel and expose grey matter which has taken root within our systems. Outside bread and sale, bread is an everyday consumption in Zimbabwe now. Schools, hospitals, everybody eats bread on a daily basis, if not twice a day. If you find a company which then Breaks that bread 1200 kilometers from its customers and he charges the same price within his territory radius of 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers and a radius of 800 kilometers, they charge the same price. Something very untoward is embedded in those figures. And this is why the academia must then ask questions how is this happening? If we start listing our key foods and we eliminate it and they eliminate the anomalies, Business intelligence will come in and eliminate those anomalies and improve GDP and ultimately money paid to the farmer. The wheat farmer, instead of getting his money, the transporter is getting more money out of it. And that is an anomaly and it must be eradicated. But let's do it in a manner which is constructive. Let's expose grey matter in that transaction. How do you justify that in the town you make bread, in another town, 1,200 kilometers away, return journey. You still charge the same price. That's not, that's not business. And that's certainly the arithmetic does not get up there. But business intelligence as a subject at every university, in, every, in African institutions, we also urge the AU to balance the equation. Business and politics, not continuously talking about the political agenda. We want business to complement our politics. By so doing, creation of jobs will take root and our youth will not migrate to other economies. They will stay in their respective countries and contribute growth of GDP at this level. Wow, that's, that's quite wonderful. You said we found it necessary to decentralize our education, our health institutions. Uh, today we speak of provincial hospitals, universities, under the devolution agenda guided by the business intelligence that you're talking about. So I guess each province must indeed have targets.
to meet the above things that you've been talking about. And whilst all that, um, how then are we able to underpin in villages to be able to develop infrastructure that grows the district uh, GDP? Yes. We have five examples. I cited Chirezi district in Shingo province. If you go to Chirezi district today, the business activity within that district is driven by the revenue coming from sugarcane. Now, can you imagine if they did more? They also do additional crops. Now we are hearing that uh, token because it then is uh, an additional infrastructure development. It means more crops can be done under irrigation. Citrus can be, can be brought in. So, what I'm saying is that let's build. If in the past, if you remember, Kadoma was about cotton. So is Hartley, which is now Chebut. It was about cotton. Chitungiza is about textiles, the byproduct of cotton. So, one crop can grow a city, a town, and attract investment from London, from Washington, from Moscow, from Beijing. These visitors who come to our country, they are not just, they are hunters, they are not visitors. In fact, they are stroke visitors, stroke hunters. And when you are hunting, you are ruthless. Yes. 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 You see Chinese, when they come in, they are hunting all over. They even stay in the bush. Mm -hmm. But there are consequences for that. Mm -hmm. There are consequences. They are traveling miles and miles away from their country to come and sniff in Gokwe, to come and sniff in Mzalaba. Now, yes, we need technology, like the recent finding of oil and technology. We need that high-tech technology. But let's be participants, not only to be the source of raw material. Let's invite those who are investing. Say, guys, in, in return for our own small equity in the raw material, we are also taking equity in the final product. That's the mitigation I'm talking about. That's the PPP approach, public-private partnership. We need that. That's the foundation of business. Mm -hmm. Business complements politics. Mm -hmm. Politics, yes, I hate. That's the greater, but we must build the, that, that road by business and politics being intertwined. And if institutions like SADAC, do they have a business unit? They do have a business secretariat? AU, do they have a business secretariat? I'm not too sure about that. It's political committees. That was yesterday. Let's build today and shape tomorrow by business combination, by political combination. But business and politics give a fair amount of time and resources. We need business executives meeting at AU level under the respective government and discuss ways and say challenges. Why are you still, for example, Zambia, copper? Yes. Every day, every single day, no less than 50 trucks are going down to buy passing through Zimbabwe on our roads. 50 trucks, 10 ton trucks. Is that necessary? Mm. I don't think so. Starting with Kaunda. Today there's a new president coming in. We believe he's a businessman. He must revisit those issues. Mm. You can't ship copper forever. Mm. You're shipping jobs out. Yes, yes, yes. Bring that technology from Beijing, from Washington, back to Zambia. Employ Zambians, Africans. Then we are winning. That's some of the issues we believe. Business intelligence will expose. But business intelligence highlighted at African Union level. When heads of state meet, they must have their business people with them. Not meeting political colleagues all the time. There's no free lunch. Yes, yes. You used to be the chairperson of the Soviet Conservancy. Yes. A uh, while back. And uh, part of my investments, we must continue to lobby our government. It's a listening government. And if you do well, they notice it, they will listen to you more. So we are lobbying government now. But look, let's not be a source of raw material, but let's be an equity participant in those respective countries which are buying our products, our raw material. So that's the debate which is ongoing. And I believe that uh, you know, we, people are listening. The other issue is that uh, as a nation, it's a multi approach. Education is vital. Transport system, infrastructure is vital. We welcome the government which has got this emergency road building. Our roads, you can see activity. When you are building a road, funny enough, the textile industry is doing well, the overalls. Those women, they are working suits, they are working, working suits. 
That's, those are the byproducts which come through. So we are saying economies of scale will be triggered in that process. But business needs space. In fact, my own recommendation is that we must have a ministry or a department within the president's office which looks at business intelligence. There is security intelligence, there is political intelligence. We need business intelligence to be, to be a key cornerstone of development. Thank you so much. Uh, every crop has production techniques. Um, you're definitely going to expand that for us. Production techniques. Uh, we have to come to an end. Uh, I don't know what are these production techniques. As you conclude, I'd say you find out take production techniques. Let's leave it for the next subject. Part two. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I was joined by Mr. Tibes Oyabata, the CEO of Reapers and uh, the chairperson of the traditional producers, uh, Grains Producers Association. Uh, TGPA uh, discussing value addition in our agriculture in the thrust to complement uh, even what the Ministry of Lands, uh, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Rural Resettlement has been doing so that our nation goes a gear ahead. Thank you so much, Mr. Yabaza. It's a pleasure, my brother. Thank you.